far, everybody, it is currently just before dawn as of this recording. So let's talk about just before dawn. I got the recent Code Red uh, Blu-ray release. And this is a movie that's getting very popular as of the last few years or so. I hear it getting getting brought up a lot more. And everybody is saying it's a hidden gem. It's awesome. It's got a pretty good score, too, for a slasher movie on IMDb. And I think even Rotten Tomatoes has a pretty good score for it. Um, I don't see what's so great about it. I think it's a little overrated, if you ask me. Someone recently pointed out in my comment section that Sleepaway Camp is overrated, overrated, but I think this is getting a little overrated, if you ask me. There's a lot of people putting this in their, like, top 10 or, you know, top 25 slasher movies, top of the 80s. I just don't see what's so fantastic about this. It has some good moments, but it's just missing some things that I would want in a slasher movie. So... I can't give it that high of a praise that everybody else seems to be giving it. This is directed by Jeff Lieberman, who did Squirm, and it stars George Kennedy, Mike Kellen, Greg Henry, uh, John Lemon, and it has Ralph Seymour from Killer Party. And this movie has a very basic, simple story of just campers in Oregon going hiking and camping, and they bump into a family that has these inbred, you know, overweight psycho and you know twins that are stalking them and killing them one by one and you got george kennedy who's playing the forest ranger who warns them not to go up there and they ignore their warnings and they go up anyways and they pay the price what i like about this movie is the opening kill i think the opening kill is fantastic it's, it's unique it's brutal i've never seen it in any other slasher from the 80s it is awesome but unfortunately, that's where the kills end when it comes to being good and gory. That's it. Just the opening kill. The acting overall is good. It's above average for a slasher movie of this budget, this caliber. You know, I mean, you got George Kennedy, you got all these actors who are famous now and were famous at the time, like George Kennedy. So it makes sense. Greg Henry, I mean, pretty good acting for a slasher movie. I like that these characters seem real. They don't look like models you know, the women and guys in this movie, they just look like real people. They're your average Joe. You know, the dialogue was actually decent between them. They cracked some decent jokes. Like, I liked them. They seemed likable. They seemed real and genuine and kind of made you root for them and not want them to die. But at the end of the day, it's a slasher, and I want to see somebody die. I want to see some bloodshed. I like the whistle soundtrack. You know, there's this whistle theme that they use i mean there's a guy who has like a deer whistle and they kind of take that and make it a part of the score and i like the final girl's arc in the movie although predictable i mean you know where it's going she's the final girl of course she's gonna go from a scared girl not gonna be able to do anything to help out her friends at first because she's a scaredy cat but then at the end she stands up for herself then she puts up a hell of a fight against the killers in this movie and she really kicks ass at the end. So I really liked her progression as a character. I will say that this movie has some decent night photography. Like it's not overly lit and it's not too dark. It actually looks like they spent most of their budget on the equipment they were using. Like it looks good. The movie looks good. The Blu-ray transfer is really good. You can see everything. It looks really crisp and clear. As for my negatives and nitpicks, I feel like there's a lot of music missing in this movie that would have really helped complement some of the scenes and really add tension and suspense. There's scenes where there's just like no music at all when something intense is happening, someone like about to fall to their death and there's just no music at all. I felt like that was a mistake. They should have added more of a score to the film. And there's just a long gap between the opening kill and the next kill. It's like 45 minutes almost and so that's just too much for a slasher and the kills overall besides the first one are lame just simple stab in the stomach and then the other people get killed off camera it's a very very low body count this movie is about five people going into the woods and only like a couple of them die so it's a small body count it's not you know like seven or you know 12 like the friday the 13th movies where there's always like a dozen people this is like five kills i think it's just not a lot of kills and i feel like this movie should have been trimmed a little bit there's just sequences that feel like they go on forever 
and some shots that kind of just linger a little too long. Like the editing isn't that good. It should have been tightened a little bit to help the pace. And the whole backwoods family thing I could do without because it's not interesting and they don't explore it at all. It's just very basic stuff we've seen before like crazy family in the woods are protecting their own but we don't really know shit about them i guess they're inbreds but none of that stuff was interesting to me i didn't care for it it would have worked just as fine if not better if it was just two crazy twins in the woods killing people and i would have been just as happy like the whole pa and ma and you know their daughter mary cat like all that stuff i didn't really care for it like if you're going to introduce all that stuff like make it interesting explore that the history like i want to know more about this family like how are they even surviving up there and how are these two killers so overweight they're just constantly running around in the woods you think with all that exercise of climbing mountains and stalking people and murdering them one by one they would start to lose some weight i mean i guess they're eating their victims because they're freaking huge and i don't like them as killers these two twins they're just not scary to me they're just overweight so overweight that i'm pretty confident i could outrun them if you know <laughs> and i don't like maskless killers either like there's sometimes it works but these maskless inbred twins just didn't do shit for me i think they were intimidating or their stupid laugh like it, like that was supposed to be creepy their laugh like, it didn't work for me so that's really that's really about it final thoughts it's an okay slasher like the characters are good the dialogue is above average for a slasher movie. You know, the movie looks good. The transfer's great. Um, the ending, with the way things go down in the last five minutes, really saves the movie because it's out there. Like, I don't want to spoil it right here, but what the final girl does is pretty kick-ass. It has a really good final girl, um, some good performances for a slasher, and... I guess it's worth checking out if you're a slasher fan. So when it comes to Just Before Dawn, consider streaming this or renting it at Redbox. All right, so this movie opens up at dawn, and we see a couple of hunters, one of them being Mel from Sleepaway Camp, and his uh, nephew gets a machete through his crotch out his asshole. And we see these twin girls in town, and we never see them again. Like, who are they? Why weren't they ever shown again? They're driving by, and the... Uh, Ralph guy, he sees them, he's like, why are there so many twins around here? Those are the only twins we see at that moment. So I guess there was a lot more before that we didn't get to see. Um, so then they hit this deer, and the way that whole sequence was shot was kind of cheesy. Like, the deer looked so fake the one second you saw it. And then the deer's just gone. Where did it go? Did the killer grab it and take it off the road? And is that what they're eating? Is all the deer out there? And so we get this ranger, played by George Kennedy, and he's basically Crazy Ralph, and then Mel... From Sleepaway Camp, he becomes Crazy Ralph. So we got two of those characters in this movie warning them, like, you're doomed if you go up there. And so Mel, he just keeps calling the the inbred guy uh, a demon for some reason. Like, just because he killed his nephew, he's a demon automatically? That doesn't really make sense. I guess he's a preacher. You know, very religious or something. He was in that church in front of the podium acting like a preacher. Um, but I like that he sees the i keep wanting to say cannibal but the like inbred hillbilly guy jump onto their rv and he starts like laughing about it like serves you right for not helping me out <laughs> and and which is a good thing because think about it if they picked him up and took him wherever he wanted things could have ended a lot differently it's because they didn't pick him up that he went to go tell george kennedy about them and that made george kennedy go up the mountain to find them and help them at the end so that was a good decision on their part they don't think anything of the rv shaking when the inbred guy jumps on their rv like the whole thing like fucking shakes from him jumping on it and there's like oh what was that who cares like i would want to investigate something like that there's a lot of that in this movie where they just seem to like let things go and drop it and not investigate further and that's bullshit and then we get this campfire scared just like in the burning friday the 13th but again they don't think anything of it they hear a noise in that direction and then their two friends come from behind them and scare them and clearly they heard noises over there and things moving they saw somebody out there and they're just gonna drop it and i ask like well if you're from over, if you just came from over there who was over there and then later on in the river or you know whatever at the waterfall the girl gets 
groped by the killer. She thinks it's her boyfriend and she sees her boyfriend over there and she starts panicking, but then just drops it. She's never like, well, you know, what, who was that grabbing me? They never investigate further. It's like, at that point, there's somebody out there. You need to get the fuck out of there. I love how when he's going across the rope bridge, he keeps telling them like, don't look down, don't look down as he's looking down. It's like, you kind of need to look down so you know where you're stepping and you couldn't pay me to walk across that bridge. It's one of those bridges where it's just three uh, ropes going across. One that you stand on and the other two you hold. And it's, that's dangerous as fuck. I wouldn't walk across that. Megan, the redhead, she just takes her top off in front of all her friends. Now, it's not like it's just her and her boyfriend. Like the other three are there. Her boyfriend's brother is there. She doesn't care. And another thing about that scene where he's touching the girl from underneath the water, the killer has, like, Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible abilities to hold his breath for, like, five minutes. He's under the water for quite some time and somehow manages to sneak on out of there right after without being seen in a bright orange vest. Bullshit. Then, you know, Mary Cat, the twin girl or whatever, like, she's not a twin. They, they should have done that. She should have had had a twin that was evil and then that could have been like the end twist at the end where when she comes out of the bush and it's like a fake out scare like oh it's just her it could have been like her evil twin we never met and he she kills greg henry and then the good twin comes out and it's like another reveal like oh shit she's got a twin also you know they could have done something like that but instead they gave us an unnecessary fake out scare in the bushes like unnecessary I love when the crazy family arrives and they shoot the radio because they were playing the worst song ever. It was annoying as fuck, so thank you for shooting it. Then the guy falls off the bridge. I guess he bumps his head and dies that way. And then later on, his body like falls right at the other two people's feet as they're like having this tender moment together. He kind of like breaks up the tension. Surprise! Here I am, dead. He tries to give him CPR right away, so at least he tried. We get another stupid fake out scare where the redhead somehow walked all the way across the creaky wooden floor church to sneak up on Ralph and he didn't hear her walking up to him. I call bullshit. But then they just started having a photo shoot in the cemetery and those tombstones look really, really fake. And, but why? Like that scene just feels random. Like why are they taking pictures of the cemetery having a random photo shoot? And their idea of like a joke is to start kissing each other like oh man your brother's gonna hate me when i start kissing you like they think that what's his face is around the corner her boyfriend and she's like let's do something to piss him off and he just starts kissing his brother's girlfriend so now i want him to die because that's a dick move and then i guess this is the moment where it's revealed that there's twins and they don't really play it up like a big uh you know twist it's not like a real big shock but whatever so it was just i guess this this was the moment where you realize that there was twins and i love how he gets mad at jonathan's dead body when it's like somehow propped up against a tree standing up i love that connie the final girl climbs up the tree and we get a nice shot of her ass hanging out of her shorts very short shorts and she climbs up that tree to escape just like marcus and hatchet and the killer is hacking down the tree with his machete that would take forever to chop through that, but he does. As he's chasing her, he's spanking her ass with the machete like on the side, so he's not like actually chopping at her, but he's like spanking her ass. He's, he's just, he's toying with her. And then he gets gunned down by George Kennedy, and then they think it's all okay. You know, George Kennedy, he just leaves him there, goes on his horse, rides off, and then they decide they're gonna spend the night there one more night because they think everything's okay but then of course the second killer shows up and she has had enough she just immediately starts kicking his ass and she's like flinging her arms trying to pounce on this guy her boyfriend gets like a machete to the side so he's just on the ground moaning and just being a total wimp not even helping out he sits there for like five straight minutes while his girlfriend is fighting this guy just sitting there staring not doing shit not trying to help at all what a useless piece of crap and <laughs> so then connie pulls like a hugo stiglitz from inglorious bastards and shoves her hand all the way in his mouth and chokes the bastard so that was pretty cool she sticks her like whole arm almost down his throat and then her boyfriend is just like crying and weeping in her arms and 
She should have just been like, shut the fuck up before I fist you too, and not in the same hole, you pussy. That's what she should have said. And then we get the final scare with the twin. And I keep calling her twin. She doesn't have a twin. She should have. But the girl just coming out of the bushes. And then it ends on the same shot it started with, Don. So there you go. End of movie. The Hockey Mask Award for Best Character in this movie is clearly the final girl, Connie, because of that showdown towards the end. And the Hanky Award for Worst Character in this movie will be Daniel, the guy who's trying to... Ki who's kissing his brother's girlfriend as a joke. That's not a joke, asshole. And the hottest chick in this movie, I guess, will be Megan. She's the only one who gets topless, but to be honest, none of the these girls are really all that attractive. And the clap reward for best scene in this movie is easily the brawl at the end between Connie and the inbred killer when she shoves her hand all the way down his throat. That is fan fucking tastic. And the Mr. Hat Award for best kill will be Vashel. Uh, the hunter at the beginning who gets the machete through his crotch and out his ass. And the Mr. Twig Award for Worst Kill will go to Megan, who gets pulled away off camera and dies in a mysterious way. We never see her body. There is no aftermath. There's nothing. And those are my thoughts on Just Before Dawn. Let me know what you thought about this slasher in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, auf Wiedersehen.